encourage and want all of the presidents of the HBCUs that are here, my friends that are here, uh, Dr. Robinson, Dr. Jones, Dr. Artis, please stand. This is the president of Florida and M University, the president of the Four Valley State University, and the president of Benedict College. I want to thank you. You've all been engaged and involved, and I have a great honor of serving as a trustee for the Florida and M University. I graduated from Fort Valley State University 46 years ago. Well, the organization, um, I, I got elected in 1994 as a national chair. So when I came in, the challenge we had is that you can imagine in this country when you got positive, successful black men, everybody was pulling on the organization, pulling on people. And I thought it was important for us to have a solid foundation. Um, I did my undergrad at Fort Valley and then at Georgia State, and a lot of that I had to look at this whole issue about um, planning and, and things of that nature. So I took to the board my first meeting as the chair of the board and chair of the national organization, a program called Four for the Future. Everything we do in the organization until this day, from 94 to this day, it has to fall in education, mentoring, health and wellness, or economic empowerment, and we add an overlay of leadership development because leadership is everything. You gotta have good leaders no matter what you're doing. I was in the U.S. Senate for 16 years. I was the first African-American state director appointed by any U.S. Senator. I believe under leadership, it's about being able to pull people together, to be able to maneuver through what may be uh, um, kind of a a variety of talent and being able to mesh that talent together. And the things that we've been able to do is because of our commitment to young people and making sure that we build our communities and more importantly, to be the force that we have to be when it comes to doing what's right, whether it's in education or whether it's in entrepreneurship and opportunities. The legacy I want to leave is for my children and grandchildren, for all the children I work with, is that he was committed to us. Real leaders don't seek followers, they inspire them. And so that's why inspirational leadership is what I seek to do and be. And, but, it, you know, in all of my campaigns, I always tell folks I'm a, I'm a work horse, not a show horse. But the important thing is we teach young people that they have to depend on each other. And even in our teaching in the classroom, we tell them if you're successful, but your colleagues aren't successful, you're failed. This lady is my wife. Can't say enough about it. I've been battling the stage four pancreatic cancer for three and a half years. What would you like your legacy to be? Well, I, I think about that a lot. You know, I work and do things because they're the things you have to do. Um, I look at so many people that sacrificed before me. You know, Dr. King and all of those who fought and were beat. And Dr. King didn't die a rich man, even though he could have. And having had mentors like Dr. C.T. Vivian and, and Ambassador Andrew Young, where I was married in his home 37 years ago, and Sonona Clayton and James Orange and Joseph Lowry, I live in a city now where it's really civil rights royalty. And what I want to do is to keep doing all that I can, as long as I can, to make sure that the young people, when they see my name and see me, they know I was committed to the community. I don't want anybody looking up to me because I had a title or position. I want to be recognized for being a member of the family that worked hard did not forget his roots, did not forget from whence he came, did not forget what my values, my family taught me, and didn't forget that, again, we have to continuously open the doors of opportunity. There's so many young people and talented young people that we have to be there for them. One of my late great friends, Dr. Miles Monroe, uh, wrote in his book on leadership, he says that the most valuable real estate in the world are the graveyards where people went to their graves with so much talent and resource and knowledge 
And he said, we have to die empty. So every day I get up, I empty my life for others because I want to make sure because God has blessed me and I have the ability to help others, then I have to help others because others help me. So I want my legacy to be one, again, of caring, one of commitment, and one of paving the way for future generations to be and do whatever they choose to do.